Hi family, my name is Betty. I am making a video about how to let go. Are you somebody who needs to let go of something in your life? Aren't we all? Let me tell you about some of the things that I have successfully let go of in my own life. In my life, I have let go of drugs and alcohol. I haven't touched any sort of mood or mind altering chemical in nearly five years. In two weeks, I'm going to have five years in recovery. That is crazy, okay? I used to be obsessed with drugs. It was my whole personality profile. In fact, I'm covered in tattoos of like liquor bottles and packs of cigarettes and there's like a naked girl in a martini glass. Like booze was my life. Alcohol, drugs, that was my jam, okay? I thought I was some kind of party girl. Haven't touched any of that stuff in almost five years. I also haven't touched caffeine in that same amount of time. No caffeine in five years. I have not acted on eating disordered behaviors in over two and a half years. I have not abused laxatives or enemas in, in one and a half years. And I'm eight months no sugar. So those are some of the things that I've let go of. And I've been working with a lot of people lately that are looking to let go. And I'm going to bring up like a kind of controversial topic. But people are looking to let go of watching porn obsessively and masturbating. And so this subject has come up. And I've gotten client after client after client looking to take care of this. And so, of course, my clients are reflections of me. Everybody that comes into my awareness is a reflection of me. We're all reflections of each other. And so I'm listening to spirit. And I think that spirit is telling me to do the same thing that I'm, you know, guiding other people to do. And that's to let go of porn and masturbating. I don't know how the, how the H I'm going to do it but I'm definitely gonna try. So, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with your system of beliefs. And I know that if I've let go of so many other things in my life, I didn't even mention the fact that I'm a gluten-free vegan as well. I also let go of all different kinds of meat, dairy, and, and wheat. So like all of these things, I've gradually let go of things. And it's to make my frequency higher. For, Cause that's my belief. I believe that if I let go of these things, my frequency will get higher. I'm not saying, you know, if that's, that's how it is for everybody. Uh, but I do think that porn lowers your frequency because everything has an energy attached to it. So like alcohol has it has its own frequency attached to it. So if I consume alcohol, I lower myself to the frequency of alcohol. So I want to do things that uplift me. So for me, meditating, exercising, drinking water, connecting with other people, being of service, those are all things that have a higher frequency attached to it. So I want to get down with those things. And I also utilize the law of attraction in my coaching when we talk about how to let go of things. And I'm going to tell you my number one tool to really let go of things that you feel like are holding you back. And it's this big, beautiful book right here. It's called A Course in Miracles. Perhaps you've heard of the author. His name is Jesus, y'all, okay? Jesus wrote this beautiful little bit of light reading here. I talk about this book a lot because there is a workbook inside of it and there's one lesson for every day of the year and that workbook is a reprogramming. And for me, the law of attraction and this book are very closely coupled together in my own spiritual integration journey. So I believe that if you can follow the lessons in A Course in Miracles workbook one a day for one year, you can have a totally transformed life. And you don't even have to understand what it is that you're reading or doing. It's about discipline. Everything is surrounded with spiritual discipline. So even if I wasn't to do the workbook lessons, I could start to incorporate spiritual discipline into my life. So having a spiritual fitness routine. For me, it's drinking water, saying affirmation into my water, setting intention uh, in the morning and right before bed, saying prayers, meditating, all of these things build up momentum to make big changes. A million baby steps equals a gigantic leap. So if you're looking for a gigantic leap in your life, the first thing you have to do is start to get spiritually fit. Okay, let's work those light body biceps. There's something there. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out some wording. But I did say to somebody that I was going to tell my Course in Miracles story. So let me tell you about how I came upon this book. 
First of all, I was completely convinced when I got this book that it was a handbook for the recently deceased because it's huge, thick, reads like stereo instructions. I was like, hello, where's my caseworker Juno to help me get through this Beetlejuice reference? So first I read a bunch of books about A Course in Miracles before I read The Course in Miracles because of all the reasons I just said. This book is, seems like it's almost impossible to understand because it's not written from a human mind, okay? It's Jesus and, you know, he's pretty smart. So I started reading uh, A Course in Miracles Made Easy by Alan Cohen. It's my number one recommended if you want to get into a Course in Miracles book, read A Course in Miracles Made Easy by Alan Cohen. I also read The Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein, and she is a course teacher and student, and that book is super digestible, really easy to read, quick read, and it can make quantum shifts in your life. This is all until I write my own book, and then I'll be pr promoting my book, obviously. So uh, I also read Karen Casey's book about A Course in Miracles, Marianne Williamson. Uh, I read Jesus, My Autobiography by Tina Louise Spaulding. So all of these books helped prepare me for what the, getting into the actual Course in Miracles was going to be like. And then I found great Course in Miracles teachers and study groups and communities of people. But when I first started reading this book, I was in treatment for my drug addiction. And I stayed in long-term treatment for a year and a half. So I had plenty of time to read this 1,800-page manifesto. And I knew that I could complete the workbook lessons because I knew that I was going to be in there for over a year. So I started diligently reading this and writing down the things that I thought about it. And I, I was completely convinced that when I got to the end of the book that I would be able to leave my body and go back to heaven. Because that's all that I was trying to do was just get back to my spiritual experience, get back to the space of eternity. And so I thought this book was my ticket in, into that. Because in, in this book, it tells me that I'm not a body. I am free for I am exactly as God created me. And so I kept thinking that if I just followed the principles of the book, I would be able to leave my body. So I'm setting intention the whole time that I'm reading it. When I finish this, I'm going to leave form. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait for it. I get to the last paragraph, last page of the text. I'm so stoked. I take off my shoes. I lay back in my bed, in my bunk bed. I lived in a bunk bed for a year and a half with, with six other women in the same room. I lay back in my bed and I get to the last sentence and I'm like, this is it. I'm going home. And I got to the last word and nothing happened. <laughs> but I had a lot more information and I felt much more prepared for what my life was going to be, which was to be a teacher of this book and to be a student of this book, uh, probably for the rest of my days on earth. And I'm completely obsessed with it. I think that it really does create quantum leaps in your life. So if you're somebody who's looking to fast track change you know changing in one year is pretty profound sometimes it takes people decades of time to create real change lasting change in their life so please you know like find a tool that works for you if you're not sure what those tools are feel free to reach out to me I've studied a bunch of different tools and I've got a lot of there's a lot of information floating around in this skull, and I'd love to share it with you. Or if you're looking for personal mentorship, somebody to guide you through the state of transformation, please feel free to reach out as well. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. I feel like maybe I have a lag, so I'll give it a second to catch up, and I'll say 